Gonzaga Nation SI with a special guest today, someone who's calling the Pacific at Gonzaga game for CBS Sports Network, someone I've gotten to know a little bit over the last few years as I've called more games for CBS Sports, the great coach and the great analyst, Steve Lapis. Coach, how goes it? First time in Spokane. Dan, I'm enjoying being in your backyard. What a beautiful place. And I'm really look. it's my first time here, as you said, and I'm really looking forward to getting to that McCarthy Center because I can tell you one thing, it'll be enjoyable as an analyst, but I don't know how enjoyable, enjoyable it would have been to be a visitor here. <laughs> well, you had lots of experience as a coach taking teams to the NCAA tournament. Uh, most people will remember your time at, at Villanova. Um, give us a little bit about your time as a, as a head coach and kind of the doldrums of February when – a lot of times, you know you're in the NCAA tournament like Gonzaga does now, but you have to keep improving, which is where Gonzaga is in that funny world right now. Well, you know, it's, you're right. It's it's a funny balance. And I had teams – I haven't had – like Mark Few has basically known in February for the most part that he was in the NCAA tournament. I had a few years like that, but I also had a lot of years on that bubble where every one of those games you played in February could be the difference. So I've been on both sides. Mark's probably been on the side of – we know we're in. Now we've got to get ourselves ready to play our best basketball by then. And that's a tough balancing act. And he's had tremendous success in the NCAA tournament. Obviously, hasn't won it yet, but that's coming. Whether it's, it could happen this year, it'll happen. it's going to happen. It's just a matter of when it's going to happen. But he has that balancing act, especially in a league where, let's face it, I mean, it, and the WCC is much better this year in terms of this. Might be four teams getting in the tournament, possibly. But there, every game is 25 points. I mean, you can't deny that. So that's got to be a hard thing to keep guys alert and keep guys going. But, you know, you also don't want to practice too much this time of year. you got to cut back. So he's got a real balancing act in terms of getting that team ready for the NCAA tournament, which he is really good at. Yeah, his teams always tend to peak at the right time. I think the last six Sweet 16s, uh, they're one of the elites now. With your time in the Big East, you saw a lot of elite teams. You saw the John Thompson, Georgetown, Hoya teams. You saw a lot of good Syracuse teams under J Jim Beheim. Um, give us, and I know Gonzaga is not a historical level team yet because they haven't won a title. They're going to at some point. Give us a little bit of what you see based on some of the great college teams that you've seen over the years. Well, I mean, you know, when you have a team that has a four and five combination like this, not not taking anything away from Nemhard and, and Bolton, those guys are obviously really good. You know, Julian Strathers has really emerged as a, you know, big time small forward who can shoot it. But when you got two guys like that, you know, that complement each other so well, you know, you don't usually have 6'10 and seven feet tall. I'm sorry. Uh, you don't usually have that. Let me just get this phone for a second. I'm sorry. You don't usually get that uh, uh, seven foot and six ten guy that complement each other so well. Where the seven footer is really a pure four man in every way, and the six ten guy is like a big time, unbelievable feel for the game down low center. So the way those two guys complement each other, and one shoots sixty percent, the other one shoots sixty four percent, and then you're two highest scorers. I mean, you know, I don't know where you go with that. In, in a lot of ways. So I think that's the big difference. You know, Gonzaga's had some great teams over the years, obviously, but I don't know if there's a four and five that have complemented each other as well as uh, Timmy and Holmgren do. And, uh, and the way Holmgren's playing lately, you know, for most of the year, we were talking about Jabari Smith was the best freshman or, or Paulo Boncaro. And we weren't really talking about Chet. I think right now, if we were giving that award today, I think Chet would win it. Yeah, the you know he's just kind of had a a a slow, gradual, uh, and, and impressive uh, acclimating himself to the college game. And I think what you've seen over the last three weeks is finally someone like, yes, this is my time. Coach Few's been preaching this. He's been encouraging this, coaching this. I believe it. I'm going to go for it. And he's looked as as good as any freshman in recent memory that I can remember. With you being uh, uh, on the East Coast. But you also work as an analyst, so you you follow the game as closely as possible. Unfortunately, there are still a lot of East Coast fans now, not analysts, but fans that keep saying, oh, well, Gonzaga this, Gonzaga that. 
you as a former coach analyst look at it differently. What would you say to someone who uses the old uh, and tired excuses for Gonzaga not having won a title yet? You know, Dan, and I said it this morning, I was on a radio station in Baltimore today and they, they brought that up. You know, what's, what's, what do they have to do to get that one? I said, you know what? You gotta, I gotta be honest with you. They've been good enough to win it a bunch of times. I said, do you know what the last factor is in sports? The final, final little piece, luck. You need yeah. some luck. And, that, and that's all it is. They've been good enough. No question. And, and that's the idea. Make it, have a team, put it together a team that's good enough to win it all. I know me personally, I had a couple of teams that were good enough to win it all, and our luck wasn't good. That's how I look at it. I think it's the same thing with Mark. Think about the play in the, when they played North Carolina a few years ago in the in the championship game. And, you know, Kennedy Meeks is lying out of bounds with a minute to go, and the referee doesn't call it. It's luck. Could they have won that game? Absolutely. They could have two championships by now. now you, no doubt Baylor last year, they were better. They were better in that game. They were just better defensively. They were, they were on a roll at the right time. Yes, absolutely. But I'm telling you, that final piece to be successful in anything, as a player, as a coach, in whatever, that final piece, a little bit of luck always helps. And I really think that, that's the missing thing. And it's, it's just if you keep getting there, it's going to happen. Yeah, you, you are so right. And you have just elevated yourself amongst uh, Gonzaga fans as far as analysts because you side on their favor in regards to the Kennedy Meeks being out of bounds. So good job there, Coach. <laughs> well, it wasn't even close. And the truth is, one of the, the maybe the best referee in the country was on. He just missed it, which happens. And, and so, you know, you, you never know how this thing could turn. This could be the year. Next year could be the year. But as you said, I totally agree. It's coming. Last question before I let you go, Coach, because I know uh, you, you have pregame shoot-arounds. You've got prep to do with your producer and your great play-by-play -play guy, Rich Waltz, uh, who I work with quite frequently. Your first experience – in McCarthy Athletic Center. Your first experience with the Kennel Club. How are you preparing to be able to stay focused on the game and hear the game and not be focused on the great student section behind you? Well, I think it's gonna be hard not to, to I think it's gonna be hard not to, to feel it because of the way the energy is gonna be in there and the way the energy always is. And you know, when you win, when you win 64 straight at home, <laughs> That, that tells you something about that place. It tells you something about the students. tells you about the building. It also tells you about the guys wearing the white uniforms. <laughs> They're pretty good, too. Well, I appreciate it, Coach. Glad to have you in Spokane. Glad to hear you're enjoying the Davenport Hotel. You're excited for the McCarthy Athletic Center tonight. And hopefully our paths cross maybe in studio or sometime uh, in the NCAA tournament this year. It's always great to connect. I think it will, Dan. Good to, thanks for having me on. Appreciate it.